hey, Lunch Lady Leah. Well, hello. So, I teach earth sciences, not the most exciting subject, and I'm having trouble holding the kids' attention. I was thinking of jazzing it up a little bit. Do you have any, maybe, kitchen science experiments that you could suggest? <gasps> How about science sodas? Hmm, science sodas? Yeah, I'll try it. Okay, just give me, give me a few minutes and then I'll get them ready. Great, sounds good. Hey, by the way, on your MySpace page, your observations about Phoebe and Central Perk were spot on. Okay, it all looks so good. Now to finish it up. Oh ho, some green. These are the best looking sodas ever. Blue, my favorite. Now for the final ingredient. Here we go. Good looking soda. Okay, next one. Okay, I think the kids are really gonna like this in class. Hey man, good game today. Hey, how you doing? And great playing today. No, I'm so thirsty. Soda. How are you feeling? Terrible! Okay, let's go see the nurse. Excuse me. Got a sick student here. He oh. drank one of my science sodas before it was ready. Hmm. I'm gonna check your heartbeat. Okay, honey, your heart beats a little fast. What kind of science sodas were these? Do you have any allergies? No, I just, my stomach hurts and I turn green. Turn green? Is he okay? I feel really bad. What were you in these science experiments? Oh, you know, just a few science ingredients. Food coloring, carbohydrates, C6H1407. C6? H1407? That's high fructose corn syrup. That explains a fast heartbeat. That has all kinds of side effects. Honey, I'm gonna have to call your mother. And I think I have to talk to the principal about this one. Do, do, do. Beautiful day, I'm hanging up my poster. Hmm. Beautiful. Oh. I am awesome. And I will keep being me. Thanks, puppy. All right. Let's uh, open my Bible. Get my study Bible open here. And my travel Bible as well. Okay. Um, can I talk to you? Hey nurse, how's it going? Sure, what's up? Well, I just want to bring to your attention that there was an incident today with one of our students. Oh no, what happened? A basketball player went into the lunchroom and drank something off one of the lunch lady's trays. What was it? It was some sort of soda, at least that's what he thought. Hmm. But it turned out to be a science experiment. Science soda? A science soda? Huh. 
Anyways, for a split second, he swore he turned green. Green? Huh, like, was it like jello green or leafy green? Um... Like, was it green bean green? Maybe Gatorade green? Grass green? You gotta help me out here. I mean, I need to know what type of green. Uh, I don't really think the color matters. Uh, I'll figure this out. I'll go have a little talk with the lunch lady and see what happened. Thanks for bringing this up. You're welcome. Thank you. Hmm. I wonder if it was M&M green. Maybe Skittles green. Ooh, I do love Skittles. So good. So uh, I just had a little conversation with the nurse and I guess we had uh, some science sodas happening and possibly a kid turn green? Yeah. I feel really bad about that. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I mean, these don't look bad. No, I think it was more just the green one. The rest seemed fine, but I still wouldn't drink them. No! <laughs> Did you drink some? Just a little. Are like... you okay? I don't feel so good. I'm little. I'm so sorry. What, what was in the yellow drink? See, when you decrease the distance between an atom's nucleus and the electron cloud atoms, you therefore shrink the molecule. Huh? It's scientific. Have you ever seen Honey, I Shrunk Your Kids? Yes. Same theory, just a different method. Am I going to stay like this forever? Um, I'm really hoping it wears off. Eventually? Eventually? I don't know. Well, oh, I mean, I guess it's good that I've been reading Philippians 112. Philippians 112? What's that say? Well, it says that even when bad things happen, it's okay. It just gives you an opportunity to talk about Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. You know, Jesus had trials and tough times. Paul had tough times being in jail. And we can have tough times too. And, and that's what we're called to do is tell people about Jesus. So let me get this straight. Everyone has hard times or bad things happen to them. But when this happens, we should rely on Jesus more? Yeah, that's exactly right. And we should tell more people about Jesus again. Why? Well, because that's what Jesus calls us to do. He tells us we should tell people about him. And sometimes the bad things are the best time to tell people about Jesus. Boy, I have a lot to learn. Oh, don't worry. We all do. And uh, that's why it's important to keep reading your Bible and uh, keep learning more about Jesus. Well, I'm still little. Can you help me out? I'm supposed to meet with some students. Oh, hey, do you want to know one good thing about today? What's that? You didn't spill anything on me. Uh, lunch lady? Oh, hey, I'm glad to see you're feeling better. Do you need something? Uh, yeah, you know how I drank the green thing? Sorry for drinking it. I didn't know. That's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes, and sometimes we have to learn from our mistakes. I've learned that a lot lately. And you know, it's how we react to the mistakes and hard times that counts. You know, you coming here to apologize, that's a step in the right direction. Thank you, lunch lady. Dear Diary, today was another rough day. I learned that everyone makes mistakes, including me. Everyone also faces hard times. It's how we react and behave in the hard times that matters. Tomorrow should be better. I really want everything to be perfect. I mean, how many more bad things could happen? Well, welcome back to the principal's office. And uh, so you guys can have a seat. And we're going to talk a little bit about Philippians. 
and uh, the day that I've had roughly uh, a rough day at that. Obviously, you can see I'm back to normal size, which is a great thing. Either that or I got a, was able to find a really small desk. Not sure. Uh, but uh, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 1. And uh, you're like, oh, this is week 3. We still haven't even left chapter 1. Nope, we're taking our time. And uh, so this, today, you know, we had a rough day at the school. You know, we had a kid turn green. We had me shrink. Lunch lady had another rough day trying to help the science teacher, but, uh, you know, obviously the science experiment didn't go so well. But it all still relates to Philippians and, and the Bible, and it's why it's so important for us to be reading the Bible, because the things that happen to us in the day, it can be not so bad when we read the Bible, and we can understand maybe why things happen or when things do happen to us, our attitude about it can be different. And so this is the, there's two main verses that I want to talk about in Philippians. And the first one is Philippians 1, 12. And, and it says in the NIRV version, it says, Brothers and sisters, here is what I want you to know. So obviously he's starting to be like, listen up, I want you to know something. If your parents say, hey, I got one thing to tell you. Here's what I want you to know. You're going to start listening. Maybe your teacher is saying like, hey, we got a test tomorrow. Here's what you need to know. All of a sudden you're like, grab your pen, grab, get your paper out. You want to make sure you study the right stuff. So this is what Paul is saying. He's like, I want you to know this. What has happened to me, this is what he's saying. What has happened to me has actually helped spread the good news. And the good news he's talking about is the gospel. He's talking about the story of Jesus, the message of Jesus. So he's saying, what has happened to me has actually helped spread the good news. And when he's saying what has happened to me, he's not saying like, oh, all the amazing things that have happened to me help spread the name of Jesus. He's saying the bad things that have happened to me have actually helped spread the name of Jesus. And he, he goes on to say, one thing has become clear. I am being held in chains because I am a witness for Christ. All the palace guards and everyone else knows it. And because I'm a prisoner, most of the believers have become bolder in the Lord. They now dare even more to preach the good news without fear. So he's in jail. And what could have gotten him down and upset He's like, I'm going to just keep on preaching more and I'm going to keep telling more people about Jesus. And me being in jail has given me an opportunity to tell the palace guards. And it says the people around him have actually become even more bold. Like they have become less fearful of preaching the name of Jesus. And so just like in today's episode, like I shrunk. I got small and, and so I could have gotten really upset and just spent the rest of the day yelling at lunch lady Leah. And I probably would have done more of that if I wouldn't have been studying Philippians. Because I see, okay, there's got to be something in here that God wants me to see. You know, this past year, lots of things that have happened that could get us down, that we could be like, why, God, why is this happening? Or we can look at it as an opportunity, as a chance to tell more people about Jesus. And so in this past year, I feel like I have gotten stronger in my faith. I have become more bold to talk about Jesus because people are looking for answers. They're looking for answers on like they're fearful, they're scared, they're afraid. And we don't have to be afraid because we know whatever happens, Jesus is in control. And that's all we need to know. And this is the same thing that Paul's saying. And he goes on to say in verse 18, here is the important thing. So he's he, first he starts off and he's like, here's what I want you to know. And now he kind of doubles down and he's like, here's the most important thing or here's the important thing. Whether for right or wrong reasons, Christ is being preached about. That makes me very glad and I will continue to be glad. And so Paul is just saying, like, we just need to continue to talk about Jesus. And we know, like, as kids, you might not have all the answers to the Bible. You know, you might not know all the answers. Someone might answer, ask you a question, and you're like, I don't know the answer to that when it comes to the Bible or it comes to a person in the Bible or why does it say this? 
What matters is that we continue to preach Jesus. God never said that you have to have all the answers. Jesus never said you have to have all the answers. The disciples didn't have all the answers. We will not have all the answers. But the important thing is, number one, that realizing that whatever happens to us, there's a reason for it, but it's an, also an opportunity to preach about Jesus. And then the second thing is, what's, more, what's the important thing is, is that Christ is bring, being taught about, that we continue to teach about Jesus. And so you'll have opportunities in your neighborhood. You'll have opportunities with some of your neighbors, maybe with your classmates, maybe with a teacher, maybe with a, an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent, that you can get them the chance, that you'll have a chance to talk about Jesus in some way, about how your life has changed because of your belief in Jesus, how you're not fearful because of Jesus, and how even through these difficult times, Jesus is there. And so you don't have to have all the right answers. Paul says it right there, you know, and he's talking like for right or wrong reasons. And it's like, he doesn't really care why people are talking about Jesus. He's just saying, I just want Jesus talked about. And I think sometimes we don't talk about Jesus, maybe because we're, we're afraid that we don't have all the answers, that we're afraid that we don't know you know, like the answers to other people's questions, so we won't say it at all. But Paul doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to be bold. He wants us to just jump out there and just keep talking about Jesus. And so, you know, that's the, the lesson from today is this, that in all that we do, in each and every day, keep preaching Jesus. And don't be afraid about it. Paul wasn't afraid, even though he was thrown in jail for it. And in fact, he saw that you know, the people around him became stronger in their faith. And, and that's my goal for you guys, is that the stronger that I talk about it, that it'll give you the strength to talk about it more. And the more that Mr. Aaron talks about it, the more that it'll encourage you to talk about it. And guess what? The more you talk about it, maybe the more your brothers and sisters will talk about it. And the more that you talk about it, maybe your friends will talk about it. And so... We just got to take opportunities when they show up. And so there will be a time each and every day where you can choose whether or not to talk about Jesus. And Paul wants us to take that chance. I want to take that chance. I want you to take that chance. Because we will see amazing things happen when we do. So let's pray, and then you guys can get back to class. Dear Lord, thank you for this message. We thank you for the story of Philippians. We thank you that uh, you tell us to be bold in our faith, that you tell us to that even when bad things happen, it's all for good. It's all in the workings of God, that there is something greater. And so let us take those chances to preach your name. And we love you so much in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, amen. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me in uh, my office, but it's time for math class, so you better get going.